Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Dr. Elizabeth, and uh, we got a comic book vending machine. Check it out. I have never seen one of these in real life. I've never seen one of these online until now. This is from Keith Gleason, uh, the creator of Mighty Mascots. Check it out. Number one, select your book. Two, insert coin. Three, push pull the little release, release the comic. Four, get comic at bottom. Five, if there's no book, don't put coins in, bro. And I saw this, and you can see my comment over here. I thought, you know, what? like I saw this, I'm like, why didn't somebody just put a vending machine just like this in every movie theater, right? Think about it. We're on year 15 or something. You're 20, maybe, of comic books all being big movie business. Uh, you got X-Men, you got Hulk, you got all this other comic book stuff out there. Uh, the Avengers movies, like, you know, it kind of kicked into overdrive for, I don't know, what, like eight years after Disney rolled in and just started making a mojillion of those movies. And yet, never... I can't recall going to the comic or going to the movie theater and seeing a comic book. Uh, I'm looking just over the top of my monitor here where I've got uh, pinned up to my cork board behind my screens. I have a poster from when I went to see Thor Ragnarok. I think it was like the IMAX, maybe even like IMAX 3D or something. But give me this gigantic, in comparison to a comic book poster, which probably cost them like 10 cents to make. But they won't go for a Marvel True Believer comic, which probably costs like a quarter to make. Why is it you can go, like, to see the latest Star Wars movie, and they don't give you a Star Wars comic book? Go to see Spider-Man, you don't get a Spider-Man book. Like, Marvel did this whole line of $1 reprints, the True Believers line. They made, I don't know, there's like a hundred, I got a whole short box worth of these things. They're not actually in a short box, they're actually just in a cabinet in my basement because I ran out of short boxes. But I got like a hundred something of these things. They're awesome. They're great. This is like the best value in comics. Now they're doing these things where they're like doing a reprint of the original printing with its old ads and stuff. And they're charging you like $7 for it. And it's just like, that's a ripoff. But these $1 reprints from before the pandemic were super dope. What I wanted to do was take like a vending machine just like this, fill it up with those dollar books, and ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. Now, of course, I realize I probably would not have made any money at that. Uh, renting space from a movie theater for a vending machine is probably really expensive. I mean, you, like, look in there. If they got, like, a Dippin' Dot machine, that Dippin' Dot machine is selling you, like, a $5 little teeny tiny cup of ice cream, right? Not exactly major value stuff. But it seems like they could have done something like this. You know, you got Thor in the theater. Why isn't there Thor comic books right outside the theater? cross-promotion. It's what made Disney work originally. You got the theme park. The theme park promotes your movies. The movies promote your theme park. The theme park promotes the TV show. The TV show promotes the movies. The movies promotes the TV show, which also promotes the books, which promotes the comic books, which promotes the albums, and all that stuff. You have this big circle of products. They all point to each other, so that somebody who comes in and is like, man, I really like Goofy. Well, before... You go see Black Cauldron or whatever. There's a little Disney short film that's got Goofy in it. You see that, you go, man, that was great. You go home, Saturday morning, you got Mickey Mouse Club. It's got a little Goofy short in it. You go see that, and they're like, hey, and we got the <laughs> Goofy book coming out. And you go buy the Goofy book, and the Goofy book's got an ad in it for the Goofy comedy album. The Goofy comedy album has a little slip in it that promotes the Goofy comic book series that's coming out next month. And so on and so on. And before you know it, you're selling people toys, books, records, uh, CDs, whatever you want. And all that kind of feeds back into your main business. It feeds back into the ancillary businesses. Every part of your organization grows and prospers. When you start neglecting one avenue of that, it starts ne everything starts to get neglected. So Disney treats Marvel like the, hey, give us idea. Hey, give us idea. Which is fine. Except that means the actual Marvel business is withering on a vine. And as that withers, 
the toys sell less, the movie receipts drop, and so on. There's like a certain level of activity you got to have so that you can feed productively into everything else. And they're at the point where they don't have that because nobody, none of the big brains thought, what if we stuck a vending machine in here? We can use it as a loss leader, but we're getting Thor books. We're getting Hulk books. We're getting Captain America books. We're getting Avenger books that are topical to the movie. Like you go see Avengers Infinity War. What should be there? Maybe the Infinity Gauntlet. They, I'm pretty sure they did a True Believer reprint of the Infinity Gauntlet, man. Pretty sure that was a thing. Anyway, I thought this was really cool, and it just sparked a bunch of thoughts in my head. So here you go. Comic book vending machine. You all take care. Bye-bye.